You need a dehydration criteria. First of all, good afternoon, everyone. I was invited to give a presentation, but I prefer to tell you something about what I have learned of neonatal dehydration. Today, maybe your questions are. One, why do we talk about neonatal dehydration criteria? The signs and symptoms of neonatal dehydration are not recognized or are considered normal by the majority of pediatrician and health providers who care for newborn. Therefore, neonatal dehydration is not suspect and neither diagnosed being an unusual diagnosis, not only in our setting, but also globally. Two, why the neonatal dehydration criteria were created for? First of all, they were created due to the lack of universal consensus in the diagnosis of neonatal dehydration mainly of hypernatremic dehydration, which is the most studied because it is the most serious. Several forms of diagnosis have been proposed, but some are non-specific, impractical, and difficult to perform. Proposed methods for the diagnosis of neonatal hypernatremic dehydration. A, weight newborns daily during the first week. B, quantification of the number of excreta. C, avoiding early discharge. D, detection of fever, jaundice, and dehydration. D, detect of fever, jaundice, and dehydration. E, daily visits to the binomial foam. F, to measure levels of sodium in breast milk and serum sodium of the neonate to measure levels of sodium in the breast milk and the serum sodium of the neonate. At this point, the fever has been considered a risk factor for neonatal hypernatremic dehydration. For us, it's one of our criteria. Also the jaundice that is more frequent in healthy term newborns younger than 10 days of, of life with exclusive breastfeeding secondary to low meal intake is another of our criteria. When dehydration is diagnosed, it is seldom classified by degrees because the index of suspicion for neonatal dehydration is quite low. Reference charge of changes in birth weight. I, nomograms of normality in birth weight loss. These nomograms are presented separately by neonates born vaginally and by cesarean section with a clear difference that shows greater weight loss in those born by cesarean section. Almost 5% of babies delivered vaginally and nearly 10% of those delivered by cesarean section had lost 10% of their beer weight within 48 hours. A weight loss greater than the 75 percentile imply great, greater risk of hypernatremic dehydration. Three, where does the neonatal dehydration criteria come from? They have their origin in the universal signs of dehydration known issued by the World Health Organization in 1985, present in infants under five years old with infectious diarrhea, but which, has, which are also present in dehydrated neonates that are not recognized or detected and therefore are considered normal signs. Let's remember the universal signs of dehydration known. Depressed fontanelle, cry without tears, hollow eyes, dry mouth, thirsty, cold and dry skin, concentrated and scanty urine, tachypnea and tachycardia, wet cloth sign, delayed capillary feeling, neurological depression, and weight loss. 
therefore, what, does the, what is the difference between universal signs of dehydration nouns and neonatal dehydration criteria? The difference is that the neonatal dehydration criteria are specific to detect early neonates with or at risk of dehydration with or without hypernatremia in a clear, simple, practical, rapid, and universal way, not like it is recommended by the World Health Organization and the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine Protocol Number no. 3, Committee 2017, as asymptomatic hypoglycemia by serum glucose, hyperbilirubinemia by serum bilirubin, five days of life, until newborns have excessive weight loss, more than 8 to 10% of pure weight. Frank signs of severe dehydration, laboratory data compatible with dehydration, and all this endorsed by a pediatrician or another health provider. Five, why are neonatal dehydration criteria important? They are important because with a fully clinical method or tool, such as this criteria, affected neonates go unnoticed and undiagnosed because babies look good or they look healthy. With causes, neonatal dehydration to progress towards severity and to hypernatremia. Neonatal dehydration with or without hypernatremia is more common than we think. We do not diagnose it because we are not recognizing its signs. Six, why it is important to diagnose neonatal dehydration with this criteria? It is important because if we do not diagnose it, neonatal dehydration progresses to the severity and to hypernatremia, becoming fatal in a short period, even in hours or leaving severe and permanent sequelae in surviving neonates. Neonatal dehydration is little known and less suspected by first contact health provider who care for newborns, and therefore they do not detect the neonatal dehydration signs, even when they are very evident. What is the difference between neonatal dehydration with and without hypernatremia. The difference is that the neonatal dehydration without hypernatremia is not serious if detected early. If we do not detect it, it rapidly evolves to the severity and catastrophic hypernatremia, increasing the risk of death or of living sequelae. The frequency of presentation of neonatal dehydration is progressively increasing, especially in healthy term or near-term newborns with exclusive breastfeeding without risk factor for getting sick and discharged early. What kind of neonatal dehydration is more frequent? Hyponatremic is the least frequent and the least diagnosed. Hysonatremic is the most frequent and the most underdiagnosed. Hypernatremic is of medium frequency but it is the best known, reported, diagnosed, and studied secondary to its severity. Its incidence ranges from 2 per 1,000 in the US, 2.5 per 1,000 in the UK, to 5 per 1,000 in Latin America, including Mexico. What are the causes of neonatal hypernatremic dehydration? initially present, attributed to the belief that breast milk substitutes or milk formulas were hypernatremic. Currently, the most accepted cause is a breastfeeding technique, but breastfeeding technique. But the main cause and the least accepted is the low volume intake of colostrum as a result of low milk production or delayed lactogenesis too. Which are the neonatal dehydration criteria? They are divided into minor criteria and major criteria. Minor criteria observed in 83.5% of studied neonates since day 
two of life. They are irritability and or, or lethargy, dry mouth, scanty and thick saliva, thirsty, habit or agitated sucking, cold, dry and flaky skin, jaundice, greater than normal by Kramer's area, oliguria, scanty, dark or reddish or urine, and airway loss, less than 5%. major criteria observed in 16.5% studied neonates since day three of life. They are depressed fontanelle, crying without, without tears and an ophthalmos, fever, wet clot sign, tachypnea, tachycardia, delayed capillary feeling greater than three seconds, neurological depression, stupor or coma, and airway loss, greater than 5%. Some authors state the following. Bearway loss is the most commonly used parameter or sign for detecting dehydration, mainly hypernatremic. Hypernatremia can occur without excessive weight loss and weight loss and excessive weight loss can occur without hypernatremia. The magnitude of postnatal weight loss depends on the relative contribution of dehydration and starvation, superimposed normal physiological postnatal loss of extracellular fluid. In preterm babies born below 32 weeks gestation, 10% of the total body water present at birth is lost during norm normal postnatal adaptation. How are they used or applied? They are used or applied as a checklist and are interpreted as follows. Three or more minor criteria equal underhydrated neonate at risk of severe dehydration. In this case, we recommend initiating prophylactic treatment and complementation of breastfeeding. Underhydrated neonate plus one or more major criteria equal dehydrated neonate at the risk of hypernatremia. In this case, we recommend initiating early the diagnosis protocol and a specific and timely treatment. This is the chart of our criteria. Conclusions. Neonatal dehydration is more common than other pathologies that have early detection methods from birth. Moreover, many of them are not serious, catastrophic, or fatal in a short term. Even some of them have a lower incidence than neonatal dehydration and have continuous updating courses and medical accreditation. We believe that neonatal dehydration should also be considered a priority in perinatal health. In the absence of universal consensus on early detection and diagnosis, neonatal dehydration criteria. Since they are clear, simple, practical, easy, no cost, quick to apply, and they could be of universal use. Even neonatal dehydration criteria are one non-invasive tool. Applying the neonatal dehydration criteria worldwide will reduce the complications and sequelae of neonatal dehydration, thus reducing morbidity and mortality in the neonatal period, mainly in countries with limited economic resources, as it is a totally clinical tool, non-invasive and non no cost. We should not wait until the neonates become dehydrated and show signs of severity to intervene, because then we are one step behind them and eventually we can catch up them. We must detect those affected with this criteria to be one step ahead of them. In cases of insufficient milk syndrome, 
it is justified to start prophylactic treatment and complemented breastfeeding, transient mixed breastfeeding, as mentioned in step six of the originals, 10 steps to successful breastfeeding of the very baby-friendly hospitals initiative. Step six is many times omitted or ignored by breastfeeding consultants, which leads to having infants surviving, surviving under hydrated or frankly dehydrated during their first 10 days of life. When we suspect that we are facing an insufficient milk syndrome, we suggest that transient milk breastfeeding be allowed. We propose a novel, no cost and non-invasive solutions to detect, prevent and treat neonatal conditions that contribute to neonatal morbidity and mortality and develop innovative solutions to improve neonatal outcomes globally. In addition, the neonatal dehydration criteria are of immediate application before the discharge and in the follow-up reviews, which we suggest are carried out after discharge at three, five, eight, 10, 13, 15, and 18 days. Also, we propose to train intern doctors and nurses, pediatric residents, family doctors, and general nurses who work in healthy cent health centers to apply this criteria without delay in neonates who come for review. We even train the mothers of the babies before discharge to detect neonatal dehydration criteria at home if they are present immediately go to the nearest health center to have their babies checked by health providers. We prefer healthy breastfed and complemented neonates than neonates with exclusive breastfeeding. Detecting underhydrated neonates and mothers with low milk production reduce the risk of jaundice neonates with fever and dehydration. If the volume of colostrum and transitional milk were sufficient in the first five to 10 days of exclusive breastfeeding, the newborns will not lose weight independently of their age and birth weight. We believe that well hydrated mothers have a higher colostrum production and lower risk of dehydrated neonates. For the finish, I would like to say like the diseases preventable by vaccination, neonatal dehydration is preventable by exploring.